Okay, so the geological history of Missouri uh, actually begins earlier than 1.4 billion years ago. But 1.4 billion years is where we're going to start because that is the age of the rocks that we can find. So you have rhyolite, ash, and lava flows cover the ground. And then under the ground, you have granite batholiths intrude into an even older crust that existed before. The Ozark Dome, so southern uh, Missouri, uh, is uplifted for the first time during this time period. Okay, in placement of uh, uh, basaltic intrusions occurs roughly 300 million years later. So this is uh, uh, in the St. Francis Mountain uh, region is where you can find these kinds of rocks. So these would be the oldest rocks in Missouri. Okay, the next uh, period is now we're going to skip forward to about 540 million years ago. So at, during this time period, shallow seas less than 200 meters deep so roughly 500 feet deep, invade the area, leaving thick accumulations of sandstone, limestone, and shale. And so this picture here uh, shows you where the continents were located at, and it also shows you what conditions would have been like in the oceans. So there might have been parts of Missouri that would have been out of the water, but there would not have been any life on that land. So you remember we were talking about Rodinia? Okay, so this is what we're talking about. Okay, now we're going to fast forward to 320 million years ago. And so you're going to have swampy conditions existing in the uh, northwestern part of the state. And uh, in the southern part of the state, it would have been a coastline. And so in the, uh, so those swamps left behind large coal deposits and the formation of the Wachita Mountains down in Arkansas to the south of Missouri causes hydrothermal lead and zinc deposits. So the heat given off by the formation of the Wachita Mountains, which is associated with the formation of the Appalachian Mountains which is associated with uh, Africa colliding with North America. So all of that is connected together. The heat from that causes hot fluids to circulate through the limestone here in southern Missouri, and then uh, it's going to leave behind uh, various minerals uh, like lead and zinc. And so that lead and zinc is mined or at least it used to be mined in Joplin, Missouri. Okay, now we're going to fast forward to about 300 million years ago. So Missouri is still a shallow ocean during this time period. And so uh, this is called the Wavalo, uh, Osceola, Crooked Creek, and Decaturville structures were formed by a meteorite impact. So an asteroid came across North America from uh, west to east. As it was traveling across North America, it began to break apart. And so one chunk of the asteroid hit uh, in Osceola. Another chunk of it hit in Decaturville. So there was a whole series of impacts caused by this meteorite. And so what it did was, since the um, Missouri was an ocean uh, during this period of time, it caused the water to do this. It sloshed back and forth. And then that rolled on the floor of the ocean mud into these bowls. So bowls from this size to this size. And today, they're a, a nuisance to farmers. So every spring when farmers in southern Missouri go out to uh, plant their crops, they're always digging up these hard uh, nodule things. And uh, they use them for fence, fence posts. 
uh, they try to sell them off. So if you want to go to uh, Osceola, you can buy one of these things about this big for five dollars. Uh, if you cut it open, sometimes it's completely uh, solid, sometimes it's hollow on the inside, but don't get the idea that these things are geodes. So they're not geodes, they have a separate um, uh, method of uh, formation. Now that picture there that is on the right is of the crater. And uh, so the crater, if you start on Highway 13 from Springfield, Missouri, and you start going north to Kansas City on Highway 13, when you get to Humansville, Missouri, you're going into the crater. And then by the time that you get to Osceola, you're coming out of the crater. So it's a very, very large crater. But if you look around, you're not going to see anything. You're going to see a whole bunch of trees, you know, green stuff, but you're not going to see a crater. So if you look at this picture, though, which shows the rivers in that region, do you see how the rivers are curving? So what happened was that the rivers adapted themselves to the outline of the crater and then after the crater was completely eroded away, the rivers were already stuck where they were located at. So you can see the outline of the crater in the river systems. Okay, now we're gonna fast forward to 290 million years ago. Uh, the oceans retreat and uh, once um, the oceans uh, start to retreat, then the groundwater level uh, it starts to establish itself in the limestone and then the limestone begins to be dissolved away to form caves. And then as the, the water level drops even further, then calcium carbonate goes back into the caves and it starts making stalactites and stalagmites and flowstone and so forth. So here is an example of a cave system that we have here in Missouri. So. I think that Missouri is like the second uh, as far as caves are concerned. I think only Kentucky or Tennessee has more caves than what we do. So now we're going to fast forward to 25 million years ago. And this is when the Ozark Dome is uplifted for the very last time, causing rivers to be incised. So that means as the ground is lifted up, the existing rivers start to cut down very, very quickly because they have a lot of energy. And so that's why when you go down into uh, southwestern Missouri and northern Arkansas, you will notice that the big river systems have these bluffs on both sides of the river. And that's where it came from. Now we're going to fast forward to 1.8 million years ago. And so now we're into the ice ages. So glacial deposits are laid down in the Missouri River and Luce's uh, wind blown materials are laid down over the state. And now uh, 200 years ago. So we went from millions of years ago to only 200 years ago, an earthquake in the new uh, Madrid uh, fault zone uh, caused a big, big earthquake. It was like a magnitude 8 earthquake. Uh, it made the Mississippi River run backwards for several days, and it rang church bells in uh, the state of Pennsylvania. So it was a massive uh, earthquake. And so this particular fault line is on top of a failed uh, rift zone. So when uh, North America pulled away from Africa. It caused a lot of rifting. And so this was a area where the ground started to pull apart, but then it failed. And so today we have this big crack in the ground, which was naturally filled by the Mississippi River. So let's uh, take a break and when we come back, we will do a lesson quiz.